I am the country director for Aid Afghanistan for Education. Uh, we have school programs for uh, girls who were denied education during the Taliban, and we've recently opened two schools for boys as well. We have, we're working in nine provinces, and we have nearly 3,000 students. It was difficult for me to believe that in, in 21st century, um, girls are uh, prevented from going to school, women are not allowed to go outside of the homes. And the Kabul that I used to remem I, I remembered was, you know, my mother opened the very first florist in Afghanistan. She always worked at them. She worked for five years with the American Embassy. And all the women I knew were working. My mother's aunt was the first senator in Afghanistan. So it was very difficult for me to accept the fact that all of a sudden women cannot go out and, or, or prevent it from getting an education. So I was waiting to come back home. And, and it, was, it was very disappointing when I came here in 1999 during the Taliban period. I established five underground school programs for girls here during those two weeks I was here after talking to many of the leaders of the Taliban to try to encourage them to reopen the girls' schools. Well, that was not happening. It was a very mixed feeling in, when September 11 happened because I knew that Afghanistan will be free uh, and I could go back home. And so I came back and the very first day actually was December 21st of 2001. It was the day of transfer of power from Mr. Prison Rabani to Prison Karzai. I also have a company called Bumi. Uh, we produce uh, home products, like decorative products, uh, such as uh, placemats and cushion covers and curtains uh, uh, for export mainly. And uh, with raw material from Afghanistan, we're using Afghan cotton and silk. And also we're expanding to the provinces now. Uh, to create jobs for families. 50% of our employees are men and 50 are, are women. But there's been so much focus on Afghan women and the international community uh, that we have denied the young boys and men um, education and, and all these trainings and everything that comes here. And I think we should really focus on the boys. Because at the end of the day, it's, it's the boys who are becoming the target of uh, terrorism. They, they've been recruited for, to, be the, uh, to become the suicide bombers. So we're focusing on creating jobs for families in the villages. At the end, they will own their own little business, and we basically will become the customer. And in a way, I think it will be my contribution in fighting terrorism, because I think this, the, this is the only way that we can gain the trust of the people. And then once we have the people, there's no way that the terrorists or Taliban can come to the villages and, and take over, because then the people will not allow that. Now, I've been here for a week, and I've never seen a woman drive. No. A uh, few women do drive, but not a lot. I, uh, I started driving in 2002 for a very brief period. But then I realized that I can cause a lot of accidents. So people were a bit shocked to see a woman drive. So but it's so nice to have a driver. I'm so spoiled, you know. I can't imagine having to drive myself every day. I mean, Fridays I can drive because it's very quiet. And you hardly see any traffic. But, but during the week, it's pretty chaotic. You know, there's no traffic laws or rules and everybody just goes and everybody wants to get from here to there so oh sorry no it's on the second street see i'm always lost because there are no names of the streets or anything you know how come so huh? there's just no names the, the municipality hasn't gotten it together yet to, <laughs> to, to worry about names of the street we don't even have the roads I see these roads have not been fixed. I feel an obligation that I think, I hope, that, that other Afghans who have also left Afghanistan and had a nice, comfortable, luxurious life in the States or elsewhere in, in the world would also feel. Because, but they have to go through, through the experiences that which I went through when I came back in 1995 and I saw what was going on in the refugee camps, which was quite shocking. And then I felt like, okay, well, I could have been any of these women sitting at one of these refugee camps. I'm an Afghan, she's an Afghan. It was just an, a coincidence, maybe luck, that I was born in a family that could take me to the States and give me, provided me with.
a nice, comfortable life. So I think there's a, there's a sense of obligation that I feel like, okay, I've had a 23 years of, of comfort and now I need to give something back to, to my people and make life better for others. And it feels good.